Today we're going to talk about what really grinds my gears. It's kind of basically what this episode of the Crypto Lounge is going to end up being. So I guess it's not going to be as laid back as I initially made it sound like it's going to be, but we're still going to go for that more like low key, no script, no video production, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, so this episode is really going to be focused on three projects, ideas, events, whatever you want to call them that have really just kind of pissed me off recently, and I just wanted to talk about them. So first of all, and I'm sure you all can guess it, Verge. (laughs) This this has got to be a joke, right? I mean, at this point in time, people have got to start seeing, at least in some respect, that this is completely ridiculous. So first of all, Verge got really popular following the shilling that we saw from John McAfee. The tweet that he put out related to privacy coins, and he started talking about Verge. He talked about the fact that it's cheap and therefore could go up more in price. He also talked about the fact, I believe there was this uh, post on Instagram or something where he said that it could go up to $15 or something, but it wasn't actually him or something along those lines. I don't really know the full details. I don't remember the full details. I did know at one point, but basically this really started to skyrocket once John McAfee started shilling for it. And then after that, we had some excitement for the release of the Wraith protocol. Everybody was talking about that. And then that ended up being a fairly big disappointment. And so, because you basically could have achieved the same effect by simply running any cryptocurrency on Tor. So then we have this situation here where Verge, in my opinion, you have roots like these and it really shouldn't garner too much respect. And then we go on, skip you know, forward two months here, and we have this ridiculous tweet. Probably one of the most ridiculous tweets I've ever seen. And if your BS detector doesn't go off when you see something like this in a space like cryptocurrencies, which everything is so hyped up, recalibrate your BS detector. All right. Important update, you know, two asterisks on both sides, all caps, explanation mark, an opportunity for Verge to have the largest partnership in crypto to date. But for us to get the partnership, you need to donate first. We need to raise a certain amount. And I forget their exact reasoning. I think it was to show that they're I don't know. There was something that was required in the partnership that they need these funds for. And so they raised a, an amazing amount of verge, right? Millions of dollars worth, at least from what I recall. I believe it was like $3 million or something like that, that they rose in this short period of time. And they were supposed to announce the partnership right afterwards. And then they decided to postpone it until April 17th because of an NDA or something along those lines. Again, if your BS detector isn't going off when you first saw this tweet, it probably should have went off when they then decided to delay, okay, when they decided to delay the announcement. And there is some speculation going on that the person that is in charge of Verge has some tax problems because its funds are frozen or something along those lines. So basically he took the money and is going to use it to deal with his tax problems and maybe give himself a nice little payday as well. We don't really know for sure that anything like that is happening. Although I will say, you know, when you think about the track record of this particular cryptocurrency, I would not be surprised if that were the case. And then we have this situation with this network attack where you're able to fool the timestamps so that you're able to do mines or you're able to produce blocks far quicker than what you should be able to do. And so now we have the network being stolen from and the developer that's behind all of this had so many different mistakes that he made. He had that 30 second commit in GitHub that he did. And then he had, uh, he was so defensive when it came to talking about Verge. Uh, Anybody that had anything to say that was negative, he would attack them because what would you know about Verge, that type of mentality? They have censorship going on on their Reddit. They have censorship going on in their Telegram. It's just, uh, it's all so sketchy. And it kind of just, it pisses me off because people are clearly still valuing this particular cryptocurrency very highly, I guess, because they're excited about this potential partnership. 
I also think there's a very high possibility that this is being manipulated and quite substantially for that matter. I Again, you see this amount of press about something. You would think that there does come a point where stupidity has to turn off, right? If it looks like a scam, it acts like a scam. It's probably a scam, all right? And if it's not a scam, okay, it's a joke. It's one of the two, right? It's either a scam or it's a joke. Either one is not investable. So treat it like either one, at least in my opinion. If you're not investing in Verge for any reason other than the greater fool theory, I, I think you honestly deserve whatever happens. And I know that's kind of rude, but that's sort of how I feel because this is just ridiculous at this point. So those are my two cents on Verge, okay? Then we have this proof of weak hands that's been getting really popular recently. And I'm pulling up this article on Medium mostly because it had this section here that addresses the idea of, is this a scam like BitConnect or Davercoin or however you say that? And he says, basically, he goes through this, or she, I don't want to assume gender, but basically they go through this, whatever you want to call it, mental gymnastics, I guess, where, you know, scam coins have big pre-mines. We don't have a pre-mine here. Uh, usually you have a situation where there's the ability to have an exit scam. You can't do that with this particular thing because the contract is open source. And then also... They discuss the fact that there's no promises in terms of the return on investment. So you combine those three things together. It's not really a scam because it's honest. And by the way, for those of you unfamiliar with what proof of weak hands is, it's basically this contract that runs on Ethereum where if you are selling the tokens, you pay a 10% tax. I believe it's 10%. I'm going off of the top of my head here. And then some of that tax gets redistributed out to the people that are still holding the tokens. Basically, the premise is, because I don't want to mess up, I don't know the exact percentages or anything, but basically, if you sell the tokens, you get taxed, and then that tax gets redistributed out to the people that hold them. So you get punished if you sell it, and you get rewarded for holding it. Therefore, proof of weak hands. Very clever. Ha ha. Right? So there's people that are saying this isn't a scam, which is ridiculous. Just because it's honest, just because it's for forthcoming, I don't know what the word is, just because it's straightforward with you, just because of the fact that it's decentralized, so there's no real exit scam, just because it's open source, it just means that it's a scam that tells you it's a scam. So it's, in the end of the day, it's still a scam, all right? So this is something that, yes, it's still ethically I would say completely immoral, but I guess it's less immoral than other things because at least it's up front with you, I guess. I think this is really what this is trying to do is have this reverse psychology where you use a bunch of red herrings, you use straw men and logic fallacy argument type of thing, and people fall for it. If you're, again, putting any money into this for any reason other than the greater fool theory, deserve, again, whatever happens to that money that you put in. And honestly, I wouldn't even bother with this from a greater fool perspective because this is literally, I mean, it's just like playing with a house of cards or, uh, you know, playing a game of Jenga where you pull a block from the tower and you just pray that it doesn't collapse on you because that's exactly what's going to happen eventually. And, you know, there, there's no functionality. There's no purpose here. There's no value in the tokens. They're, the only purpose of the token is to hold it. What is that? Uh, it's it's going to fall apart, period. Okay. And Ether is going to be redistributed within the contract, of course. So that doesn't mean that we're going to see value destroyed on the Ethereum side of things. Uh, but there will be a massive wealth redistribution and a bunch of people will get ripped off. So what else is new, right? And then lastly here, I wanted to talk about this situation with Tron making the claims that they're better than Ethereum. And this has got to be a massive joke, right? I mean, seriously, yet another thing that just, it pisses me off. It grinds my gears. I don't know if you know that episode from Family Guy, one of the greatest episodes. Yeah, this is just, I, I don't get it. He basically makes these claims that Tron is faster than Ethereum. It is lower fees. It also has, or zero fee, and it also has way more users, which that has got to also be a joke because I think what he's doing is he's taking like all the partnerships that he has and he's including his app, uh, Paywo, Paywo, I don't know how you actually say it, but 
I don't really think the users of that app, it's so not transparent. We don't really know anything about it. So it's very difficult to say for sure that those users are legitimate users or not. So I don't want to commit to saying they're not legitimate users, but they're probably not, right? They're probably not really caring about the actual element of Tron. They're just using the application for its Snapchat-like features, I assume. I, I Again, I don't want to go too far into it because I don't know a lot about it, but I heavily doubt, heavily doubt that this user number that he quotes here is anywhere close to accurate. And he has a bunch of other stuff that he brings in there, but it's honestly just, in my opinion, completely absurd. And so Vitalik responds to this. He said, <laughs> He says, he basically roasts him saying that they also have a better white paper writing capability because they just copy and paste it from other projects. And it's amazing to me that people make responses like this one where they say, product matters more than the white paper. Who cares about the manifesto when the product counts? And I'll take the product any day, basically, is what he says, right? And Justin Sun basically says the same thing, too, right? He's appealing to that line of logic where he says, you know, we encourage you to check out the GitHub, and we encourage you to realize that we are much more than just white paper writing. <laughs> what? Okay, it just pisses me off. You got to give me a moment here. What people don't seem to get is that projects aren't done in you know, tasks that are done in silo. It's a holistic thing, right? And white papers are probably the most fun, like they're the most fundamental element of creating a cryptocurrency because this is how you communicate to not only investors, but also to users what your particular platform is designed to do or what your particular cryptocurrency or crypto asset is designed to do. It is supposed to be the very, I don't know how to, it is the exact foundation of your particular cryptocurrency. It is the first introduction. It is the gateway, okay? It is the very first thing that most people want to look at when it comes to really understanding what it is you do and you screw up the very first step of making a cryptocurrency, and then you want to go as far as to say that you're better than the second largest cryptocurrency project in the entire space with the, mo well, I shouldn't say the most transactions because I think there are some other uh, networks that have more transactions, but basically Ethereum's right up there at the top, right? So, that's amazing to me. That is so beyond my comprehension. I, I don't understand. Actually, I do understand how you can make such leaps in logic, which is you lie to yourself and you lie to everybody else. And that's exactly what Justin Sun is an expert at doing. He is an awesome marketer. He is also, I believe, to be probably in that camp of people that call themselves serial entrepreneurs, who are basically people who never really stay with any one thing for too long. They just seize opportunities when they see it, and then they move on. And I really, you know, that's fine. It's okay for you to do that. But in this space where you need to stay dedicated to a project for years, it's just not going to work. And he's probably, this guy is going to move on at some point in the future. I, I don't know when it's going to happen. Maybe he won't because there's so much money in this space. So it's difficult to find another attractive opportunity, but that's basically what this guy is about opportunity. And it's not about trying to build something that's really going to change the way we see applications or anything else which is what I think Ethereum is aiming to do, even if I have criticisms of Ethereum myself, right? I mean, just like my last two videos have talked about how centralized it is, but at least it has, in my opinion, honest roots, and it's trying to do something. Whereas I think Tron, uh, you know, come on. I remember trying to read that white paper and it was so obscure and talking about how they were going to become this media giant and all sorts of other things. And I still don't really even fully understand what it is exactly that Tron does. And yeah, all I know is that this irritates me. That's it. That's all there is to it. It irritates me. And so does Verge. And so does Proof of Weak Hands, and so do a lot of other projects in the space. But those are the three that we're going to talk about today, or that's the three I did want to talk about today. 
As usual, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know this was a little bit different. It was just mostly me ranting through most of it, but this is kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Who knows what we'll talk about next, but uh, this was kind of what was on my mind, especially because the Verge thing has been all over the place. So I figured, you know what? We're just going to talk about a bunch of things that piss me off because that's the topic of this particular video. So I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, make sure that you check out my Steemit and my Twitter if you want to stay up to date with me and interact with me. Otherwise, as usual, leave a like, comment, and subscription, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.